the goal of the Reinforce algorithm is to train a deep network where the input is the observation space or the states and the output are the actions that the agent can take. Of course, the hidden layers are customizable. You can have more layers or more or less nodes. For today's example, I'm going to use the cliff walking gym environment. Let me zoom in. For this environment, the agent starts at the bottom left corner and the objective is to reach the cookie on the bottom right. Each of these states that the agent enters receives a minus one reward or minus one penalty. If the agent tries to walk off the cliff, it receives a minus 100 penalty. The episode ends when the agent gets to the cookie. The environment actually does not let the agent fall off the cliff. It only gives a penalty if the agent tries. So the episode will continue until the agent reaches the goal or reaches some kind of limit that we can set because we don't want the agent to be walking around indefinitely. So mapping the observation and action space to the diagram here, the agent can either go up, right, down, or left. So these nodes will represent these actions. For the input, there are actually 48 cells minus the cliff that the agent can't really step into. I try using one node and passing in 0 to 47 as the input. That didn't work very well. So what I did was I created 48 nodes initialize it all to zero and then depending on where the agent is i mark that one a one a typical input would look like this right before the output layer we apply a softmax activation function on the uh, previous layer what this does is it gives a probability distribution uh, let me give an example so given a particular state we could have a chance of let's say 10% chance of taking the up action, 20% uh, chance of going right, 50% chance of going down, another 20% chance of going left. If you sum it together, it has to add up to 100%. When we create this network in PyTorch, PyTorch will assign random weights and random biases, which also produces a random set of probabilities to begin with. As we train the network by adjusting its weights and biases, the probabilities will become meaningful. Let's walk through an example of one episode. In one episode, the agent can go into many, many states until the episode ends. In each one of those states, the agent selects an action based on the probability of selecting one of those actions. So let's say it takes a path of this and then this, and then somehow it ends up here. If we can determine that, let's say this action was good, the first action, we can increase the probability of taking this action the next time around in the next episode, which essentially decreases the probability of the other actions. Let's say in the second one, that was not a good choice. We decrease the probability of taking this action again and increase the probability of the other ones. And then we repeat this for all the uh, experiences. After the adjustment in episode two, we repeat the same thing over again. And eventually by the end of the training, we should have a policy that can take the agent on the best path to the goal. Now, how to determine if the action was a good one or a bad one? We need to collect the probability that was used during that episode. Whatever this probability was, we'll save it. Whatever this one was, we'll save that and so on. We also need to record down the rewards that was collected by taking those actions. I'll just put in some uh, real numbers. When it reaches the cookie, it doesn't get any reward. So the best reward is actually getting a zero. Usually when we want to optimize a network, we calculate loss using a function like mean square error. 
For reinforcement learning, we want to optimize an objective function. That function is on this hugging face tutorial. Instead of trying to decode this formula for you, I'm just going to show you how it works on the whiteboard. I'll leave this link in the description. You are welcome to come back and work through the math if you want. Using the rewards, we want to calculate the cumulative returns. The formula is generally like this. It's the discount factor multiplied by the reward. But we don't discount the first one. Zero multiplied by anything is going to be zero. So it stays here. Let's use a discount factor of one to keep the numbers simple. When we move on to the next to the last step, we got a reward of negative one. So discount factor one multiplied by negative one and we need to add all previous experiences. We get a zero here. This is a negative one. We do the same thing for the next step. We get negative 100 times gamma one plus the previous experience, negative one. This gives us negative 101. We'll do one more. Reward of negative one times gamma of one is still one. Add in the previous experience of 101. This gives us negative 102. So this is our cumulative return. Now to calculate the loss of the objective function, we take the log of the probability and multiply that by the cumulative return. Same thing for the next one. Take P1, take 101, and so on. At this point with the loss, we can tell PyTorch to do backpropagation or gradient descent to minimize the loss. But for reinforcement learning, we actually want to do the opposite. We want to do gradient ascent to find the maximum returns. Now, how can we do gradient ascent in PyTorch? So there is a rule that says if you want to do gradient ascent, on a lost, you can actually do gradient descent on the negative of that loss, which means we can just flip the signs of all of our loss and apply regular gradient descent to it. Okay, so that last step was to apply back propagation, and then that makes adjustment to our network. We go back up and Repeat that for the next episode, and we'll keep going all the way until the network is trained. Well, I hope that explanation was clear. If it was, drop me a like. If you want me to do a code walkthrough and a demo, be sure to subscribe and drop me a comment. If I posted that video, it should be right here on the right side.